해바이 토즈 레이리 How much God loves you? God loves you And so you are the only one in the whole wide world And I love you dear I'm not making this comment trying to get some wrong points from you But God said I gotta tell you today So I'm telling you <coughs> And you are such nice, genuinely nice, loving, gentle, hospitable people Full of uh, aloha spirit I love to say aloha That just is loaded with God's love There is no church as like Paul Kela Ohana in the whole wide world. Amen. Amen. What makes Paul Kela different than any other church? The people. The people. It's uh, not the building, it's not the program, it's not the pastor, the people. It is you make a difference. Amen. Got it? Got it. You are really nice people, and I love to be in this uh, ohana and worshiping God with you all. Amen? Amen. 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 Today, we are not going to talk about nice people here. We are going to talk about uh, the people of Israel who just experienced God's amazing power of deliverance. Uh, through a tenth of plague, plague, God led Israelis out of Egypt, hands of uh, slave masters, and God used uh, his uh, leader Moses to part the Red Sea, and they crossed the Red Sea. Now, they are in the desert. Before they got into the desert, they experienced God's protection, God's providential grace, and everything, the miracles after miracles, they would experience wonders of God. Now, they are <coughs> in the desert. Three days in a row, they couldn't find the water, and they were about to die of the thirst. They spotted an oasis, and they just ran and to quench their thirst and scooped it up and they tasted what? Bitter. It was bitter. So they made that place, named that place what? Mara. It literally <coughs> translates bitterness. Bitterness is a battle. Somewhere along the way, or sooner or later, we all are going to experience bitterness in our lives. Um, through conflicts, trials, and tribulations, and problems in our lives, we are going to taste some bitter <coughs> water. And some people stay in that stage Bitterness come into our lives, and it must go. We must go through it, rather staying in that bitterness. Some people do not know how to deal with this uh, bitterness that comes into their lives, and they, it just distorts their characters, and they cannot even enjoy the most uh, festive seasons of the year, even Christmas time. You know the famous story about Scoozy? Yeah? Okay, you said it. <laughs> you know? But his bitterness, God's uh, grace, love and grace that uh, turned him <laughs> to experience God's uh, amazing grace and it turned uh, him to be uh, blessed. So, when we don't know how to deal with the bitterness, if we don't fight it and we don't win it, 
then bitterness will eat us alive, even uh, kill us. So much stress in our hearts, and it's gonna kill us. So we need to learn. And today, the passage it talks about bitter water, and it's a great story of God, uh, Israel, people of Israel, how they experienced God's amazing grace, how God turned the bitter water into sweet water. How God can, it tells us how God can turn our bitter situations into sweet situations. Amen? So as we ponder upon this passage, let us uh, uh, think about why does bitterness come into our lives? And what should we do when we encounter, when we go through it? And what should we do? What shall we do? Amen? And uh, first of all, why does this bitterness come into our lives? Why? I mean, some, I mean, often a bitterness we experience through trials and tribulations and uh, um, conflicts and fights and anger and whatsoever. It comes into our lives. And sometimes somebody else Made it, mis made some mistakes, and it leads us to taste bitter taste. Or sometimes we make ourselves. We drink the water from wells that we ourselves have done. And I have bitter taste whenever. I think about Kaanapali, going to Kaanapali, you know. It was my first year I was here, and about two months, uh, it was my installation day. My family came from uh, mainland, and the minute they arrived on Maui, they said, let's go to Kaanapali. I said, where is it? I couldn't even read. Learn to pronounce Kaanapali, Kamehameha. And so I look at the map, and it has, you know, Maui map, west side, this side is bigger than the, the this side, right side, right? And then uh, there was two ways to go to Kaanapali. One is go straight to the uh, daily road, all the way to, and you hit the mountain, and you make a left turn, and all the way go down and come back up. I said, that's crazy. Let's go this way. <laughs> Highway 340. This way is shorter, and the map didn't show all this, uh, you know, winding. You guys, even if you've been there, has anybody have been uh, driving that road? Uh, if you haven't, don't ever try it. <laughs> don't ever try it. It was a treacherous disaster. I mean, winding like a crazy. It's uh, worse than the road to ha Hana. And, and, and it was one way, and it was raining. And one way, so if, if you see oncoming cars, and you have to pull over. If you don't pull over enough, the oncoming cars are gonna hit you. If you pull over enough, you gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was just, I was just shaking the whole time. But the, my family is gasping about the, the, the view. I <laughs> views. And it was, I mean, actually, and so every time, why, I don't know, people love to go to Kaanapali instead of coming over here. They all stay in Kaanapali. So every time they talk about Kaanapali or anything, I, have, uh, I remember this bitter taste in my mouth. I made a mistake. I made the wrong turn. So I will never go drive that road unless I live up there like a... Uh, the Mildred Nakawa's daughter, Naomi, lives up there, right? I wouldn't drive that road again to go to Kanapali. I mean, that's serious. So, if you haven't, don't ever try. And 